Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I've got a really interesting video for you. I'm going to mix it up, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, tips and show you some beautiful haul items that I've had in. I've had an amazing couple of weeks of buying, I've had some stunning, stunning pieces at some really good prices. So stay tuned, find out what I got. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So state your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay, so before I get going on showing you the haul items, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's a couple of tips I want to share with you. First of all, it is absolutely freezing in the UK at the moment. Um, I've had a few friends go down with pneumonia. I'm in a shop, as you can see, and you know what? I am absolutely freezing with the amount of people that are in and out and the amount the doors open. I cannot keep the shop warm. Um, so today, um, I went on and I looked on Amazon and you know you can buy electric vests you know like you had electric blankets for your bed at home and things well you can now have an electric vest where you plug it into like a USB battery um, you know we all had those extra cells to charge our phones if uh, our phone died when we were out and about we could plug these into the battery and they got elements running through the vest to warm you up now, as I said, three friends I've had go down with pneumonia this year, one very serious. So I've ordered myself one of these vests. They start at 30 pounds online. Do you know what? I will let you know exactly what happens and I'm gonna put some photos of the vest at the end of the film. In fact, no, I'll splice some photos in before I move on uh, so you can see what the vest looks like. Simple vest, put it on and it's got heating elements running through it. Do you know what? If it keeps us warm, well worth the money, guys. So that's my tip number one, because if you work in the markets, the car boot sales things, do you know, it is bloody freezing at the moment and we are still in the middle of winter. So it's worth investing in getting yourself one of those if you're out and about. Um, my second tip uh, before I move on and show you my haul is making something from nothing. Now, last year I bought a spoon, or should I say a broken spoon for 50 pence. Now the spoon consisted all up the stem of silver Travancore, Indian Travancore coins. Really nice uh, top of a spoon. But I got a, a jeweler who does my repairs for me very, very cheap. And she does a good job too. So she polished the bottom off and she fitted a pin on the back. It is now a brooch. So I have turned a 50 pence broken spoon into a 40 or 50 pound brooch with solid silver Travancore coins. The bar is solid silver. It's not silver plate. It was a silver spoon. And we have a beautiful solid silver brooch. Now I've made something for nothing. It cost me six pound to turn that into a brooch and 50 pence for the uh, half a spoon. Yeah. That's a nice little brooch if you're a coin collector and that. A lady out there who likes wearing the jewellery and collecting coins. That's nice. Now I know on eBay you can buy Travancore coins from 5 or each, 10 or each and up. And you can buy dishes made out of Travancore coins and things like that. I don't know about jewellery. But you know what? I got a piece. And for the money I've put into it, you know, it's probably a few pounds in silver. So it's not a problem. So there's my two tips. Think outside the box, you know, just because something's broken doesn't mean it's totally useless. Don't just weigh it in. If you can make something else out of it, I've turned a spoon there into a beautiful piece of jewellery that I will sell no problem at all. And whatever you do, try and stay warm and stay healthy and safe this winter, guys, because this, this trade is really rough. Um, and once you get pneumonia, do you know what? really hard to keep working in these conditions after you've had it. Anyway, I'm going to move on and we're going to look at some of the haul and God have I had some really nice pieces to show you this week. Stay tuned guys.
Okay, I'm going to start off with the haul video now with some beautiful little things. Pillboxes. Now I've had two. Now we'll start off with this one first. Now it is 925 sterling silver set with a moonstone. It does look a bit like an opal, but I'm pretty confident it's a moonstone, not an opal. It's fully stamped inside 925 Mexico and everything in there. So this one's imported from Mexico. It's a really nice, pretty, solid silver pillbox with a really nice stone on the top. Um, before I get on to telling you what I've paid and what they're worth, we'll, uh, that's the first of the two. Then I picked this one up. This is all mosaic work. You normally find mosaic work you know, on Italian things. Um, it's set in brass, or on brass. Now, I'm thinking it's a bit of trench art uh, from World War II. This is the base. Now, why do I think it's a bit of trench art from World War II? Is, look how rough it is, but look what's on the top. So we have the swastika on the top. It's quite roughly cut, so I would think it's potentially, you know, that's why I'm thinking it might be a trench made or homemade type of thing. Um, out of a shell or something like that. Or it could just be a homemade item that somebody's made, but uh, I would think it's a bit of trench art or something along them lines from the wartime. Um, this inlay almost looks like a turquoise. It's a really turquoise colour blue. And it's, as I said, it's mounted on brass and it has a very crude cut swash sticker on the top. Now these two pill boxes, they owe me £10 for the two. So whichever way you want to look at it, there's a tenner there, whether you want to say five or each, eight pound or two pound, whatever you want to call it, they owe me £10 for the two. Now I've listed them both on eBay. Um, I think I've put this one on for 30 or 35 and I've put this one on for about 40 45 So I'll look at the mark up there. But I will show you some of the prices on eBay now for pill boxes and things. So all I've done now is search pillbox. That is all I've put in the search. I've gone highest priced and I've only searched in antiques in the category because there are thousands. Now, first one to come up there is a little novelty whistle dog. And uh, it's in sterling silver and they sold it for £100. And to be totally honest with you, I think that's really cheap. Uh, a Russian Fabergé silver gouache enamel pillbox, 3000 Russian again, 1100. Yeah, little um, Samson and Morden vinaigrette and pill box, 1100. You got an 18 karat gold Jasper Way one there. You can see some of the monies on some of these pill boxes are crazy. You got a nice Clasoni pill box there. Well, you got a few Clasoni ones on silver. That's quite expensive for what that is, to be totally honest with you. Unless it's got a seriously good name behind it. But as you can see, there's such a, a range of pill boxes. Look at that. With a nice enamel decorative scene, best part of £500. But there's no limit to what you can have. That is why people collect them. They're small, they can go in a little cabinet, curio cabinet, and you can have hundreds of them without taking up too much room. And you'll always have value. Uh, I love these Nayella ones. I had one once with um, some beautiful engraving on it, done really well out of it, out of auction. But you can see the types of money some of these can pull. So, pillboxes are definitely something you want to be looking out for, guys. Just quickly, uh, if I can actually change that and take it off, sold. Bear with me a second, just taking it off, sold, see what's actually currently there. Well, you can see some of the price people are asking me now already. Right, what I want to do is call up the ones I've had. Pillbox. Yeah. 
is the first one, I think. There's mine by there, £35. So you can see what I've listed it at. And the second one, I just listed it as German. And bear with me a second, guys. There's some nice German ones on your mind. Fair play. We haven't got far to go now. Hmm, where have I put mine then? Maybe mine's not in uh, antiques. Let me change the category selection. Let's change that to all categories a minute. <coughs> go. No. There it is. My German one. So there we have it. I've obviously not highlighted the cross on the top but there we have. So that's what I've done with the two pill boxes. So I'm asking £80 for my £10 outlay. Not a bad return. Okay so my next piece is a lovely bit of decorative arts. There we have an absolutely exquisite carved mermaid. Now she's carved out of, I think it's a slab of slate. It's either slate or stone. And she is absolutely gorgeous. The most beautifully carved figurine. The work gone into her. She really is quite something. Now, this is done by Emmanuel Vidal, Vidal. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correct. Um, and it's a limited edition. This one is, I can't make it out now, bear with me. I think it's limited to 4,000, I need my eyeglass, I do. And this is something like number 2,000, so it's a mid-range piece, but 4,000 of them done, which is quite a lot really when you think of it. But, there's none around. Now, I know what you're thinking. The gent you're going to look on eBay and I'll show you in a minute. The gentleman I purchased this off at the car boot sale in Bessemer, he had it marked up at £80. Now, I bought this and the next item off him for £75. So, I'm going to put this one down to £50. Now, we actually had it up for sale on eBay for £40. And he had it up for sale on eBay for £30. And he had it up on for sale on eBay at £16 and didn't get no way. Now, I have since learned that his start price doesn't mean a thing. Because I think he's shill bidding. Because I bid on one of his lots last week that contained a bronze bowl and a brass seal and things like that. And I was outbid. I bid £20 something pound and I was outbid. The item was relisted back on again this week. So I think he's doing a bit of shill bidding. So I'm paying no attention to his um, his uh, asking prices. I couldn't find another one anyway. Now this Emmanuel Vidal uh, does bronzes, does art, does everything, and they pull big money. I bought this purely on a decorative arts basis, and I seriously rate her. You got a nice leg sticking out here. I really, really do rate this. Now it doesn't come with a stand. Originally I would have assumed it would have come with some sort of stand so she stood like that. I've at the moment got a lay down, but I may have a block made for her to hold her up like this. And to be honest with you, I don't care if she doesn't sell. It is that beautiful. Now, I've actually got it marked up at £185 in my shop. Um, I would pull the ticket out to show you but it's uh, in the cabinet I've done my research and to be honest with you I think that's cheap but apart from the gentleman who was trying to sell this one and start in the bid in low there isn't another one for sale that I can find now I'm not sure if people are cottoning on to the fact that he's shill bid in his own account or what 
um, because I'm seeing a lot of things go. I just bought a solid silver two-handled christening mug or bowl off him. Um, Georgian one for 26 pence a gram off eBay. 55 pound, things nearly 200 grams. When that comes, I will uh, put it on the video to show you. But um, yeah, his stuff is going at the moment very cheap. So I don't know whether the dealers have got fed up of him running them up and not going back. I don't know, but uh, he does, you know, his photos are crap, mine, I must admit. But yeah, I'm going to show you some of the uh, works now in just a minute. But what a beautiful thing. And to be totally honest with you, I'd have paid £50 for that to put in my own house. She is stunning. A lovely work of art. So, stay tuned. We'll have a little look what we can find. Okay, guys. So, um, I've done a little bit of searching on eBay and uh, online and everything. Now, Manuel Vidal was born in 1953 and he's a Spanish artist. Right? Artist, sculptor, whatever you want to call him. Now, he's done everything from bronzes right away down to all sorts, glass, everything. Now, you've got a couple of figures here. You've got a bronze nude in a limited edition of 4,000, the same as mine, um, on eBay for £500, but that's in bronze. Underneath that, you have a gemstone and bronze, 462. You have some paintings or prints uh, in the hundreds. If I come across here to sold prices, you've got a couple of his drawings of sold for in the couple of hundreds. There's only two results there. Now, I came down, I had a look at his biography, and they can't find much in his auction results, but these are some of his examples of work. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, this one here, I just found this one on the internet. It's a Spanish sculpture by Vidal. Five to eight thousand, no, five to six thousand. Sorry, they sell in that far. If you look, that's carved in an amethyst geode with a bronze two lovers on top. That is absolutely beautiful. I don't know what it sold for, but it did sell. Uh, there it says one bid, sold price. Don't know. You've got to pay to see it. And that is only twenty-three inches high. Well, only it's nearly two foot, so that's quite spectacular. To be totally honest with you. But you can see this is a very desirable man or woman, I'm not exactly sure. Um, <laughs> Spanish sculpture. Nobody's saying if it's a man or woman, they're just saying it's a sculpture, Spanish sculpture. So. So, yeah. But anyway, you can see the ideas here on some of his prices. And if I go just to Google. And search. I don't bear with me. And search Manuel Vidal. It's obviously a man. That's him. I'm assuming. And go to images. And let's change that to art. We want to see his artwork. We do. There we go. Just to give you a little look at some of his art. Stop photographing when I'm walking around. How are you doing, Sand? Hi, beautiful. What do you mean, are you doing sand? Are you doing sand? See what i got to put up with, guys? Are you on video? Yeah. <gasps> Bye for now. Sorry about that, guys. As you can see, Sandra is um, lively. <laughs> uh, you haven't seen her in a film for a while, so there you go. Uh, she said, cut it out. They said, no, I'm going to leave it in. Anyway, um, as you can see, that Manuel Vidal pulls real good money. So I'm really not 100% on what to do with that yet. There isn't another one for sale, period. Other than this uh, gentleman, as I said, she was trying to sell it on eBay. But I think he starts stuff really low, runs people up, and I think the dealers have got aware of it because I've only been buying off him for a week or two, and I'm now aware of it. And I'll tell you how I found him. I bought the figure off him at the boot sale, and I was searching it, and I found it on eBay, so I went to it. Then I went and found another one, and it was him again at the cheaper price. And then I was looking through his sole listings, and that's how I found some of the other pieces that I bought off him on eBay. And I put some bids on. And as I've said, some of the things I bid on, I was outbid on. So they sold. And coincidentally, they back up for sale. 
So I've rebid on him. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next piece. Um, I told you I, I paid £75 for two pieces. The sculpture and this piece. So I've put £50 on the sculpture because I think that's worth 200 of anyone's money in my opinion. Stunning. Then we move on to this. So this owes me £25 just doing the math. Now, what we have here is a honeycomb pattern and a clasone enamel applied to the brass vase. Now, this one is Japanese. I would have wished it was Chinese. It would have been worth a lot more money. But I don't believe Chinese ever done this shape. It's Japanese, Meiji period. Um, so you're talking around 1900-ish. So you've got a good 100 years old on this. The enamelin is in lovely condition. It's a really nice vase. It's 10 inches tall, give or take, I'd guess, maybe a bit more. Um, real nice design to it. Nice, bright enamelin. Love this honeycomb design all over it. And it is what it is. It's just a really nice oriental brass vase. I don't think it would have had a lid because it's quite a rounded flayed top. Yeah, just a decorative piece. If anyone wants to see the underside, there you go. So, Japanese. I'll have a little look and see if I can find any results I haven't looked yet on eBay to compare the difference between a Japanese brass enamel vase and a Chinese brass enamel vase so you can see the difference in price. But believe me, I know that I wish this was Chinese, not Japanese. However, in saying that, for £25, I'm really pleased with it. It's a lovely little thing. Now, I'll, I'll know on eBay when we look now, they're going to be on there from £20, £30, all the way up to £100+. Plus. Um, but this is, I like to handle the things when I'm buying them. When you buy off eBay, you don't always know what you're buying, unless it's hallmarked or something like that. It's not always as good as photographed. This one is a nice vase. It's got a really good weight to it. It's quality and it is nicely cast and nicely enameled. So we'll have a little look now and see what we can find on eBay, okay? Stay tuned, guys. Okay, guys, so for my year now, I've just searched Japanese brass enamel vase, and this is actually stuff that's up for sale. Okay, so this is what people are selling or prices they're asking. Just to give you a little look at what they're asking. And they are asking some reasonable money for Japanese um, enamel work. And I can guarantee you not all of this is old. That's about the same vein as what I've got here. It's around the same period and same quality-ish looking at it as to what I've got. Now if I move along to... I've just searched soul listings now. Right? I've only searched Japanese brass and enamel. Right, just to see what the highest prices were for Japanese enamel. And the highest price was a vase or an urn. £192, £61, £94, £54, and down to a bowl for 50 quid. But yeah, you come across the Chinese, and all I've done is change the Japanese to Chinese, so it's brass and enamel the same. £3,000. £424, £300, £270, £230. And none of this is really early pieces. So, that's probably the only early piece there at 3,000. Okay, I don't know what you thought of that, but I love Oriental Antiques anyway, and I absolutely love that brass enamel vase, whether it's Chinese or Japanese, it doesn't matter to me. I love it for what it is. Price is affected, but nice item. And to buy something like that off a car boot sale again, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It really isn't. Same buyer, same day, again, we have a beaker, or mug, solid silver, dated London, 1811, so you're talking over 200 years old, full set of all marks, there you go, now this is almost 100 grams, I think it's 98 grams, or something like that it was, of silver. 200 years old, 98 grams of silver, and he sold it to me for 30 pence a gram. He weighed her in a scrap. It was got a really strange name. 
uh, engraved. I can't even pronounce it, so I'll spell it. It's E L G Y F A. What a really strange Georgian name. Now, I would believe this is a christening tankard, a um, miniature tankard, and to be honest with you, for 200 year old silver, it's got to be a pound a gram, haven't it? Let's be honest. Um, if you went to a London seller for silver, 200 year old silver, they'd have five, 10 pound per gram for Georgian silver. Now, that is a beautiful little tankard. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I love it. I love this sort of. I can't even uh, describe it tidy. Ribbon, if you like. Um, the name engraved. You could polish it off if you wanted, but white is beautiful. It's a nice, solid, heavy piece of silver. And 200 years old for 30 quid. You can't tell me that is not a bargain at the car boot sale to buy 200 year old silver for 30 quid. And to be honest with you, you can buy, or should I say, you can get 30 pence a gram for melted rubbish in a pot. That is crap because it's scrap. It's a no brainer. If you're unsure, take one of them. If you want to buy silver at a car boot sale, as long as it's fully hallmarked or you're 100% of silver, you can pay 30 pence a gram and you're only paying scrap. There is no gamble, guys. No gamble at all. You can buy it at 30 pence, you can spend a thousand pound on it. If it's 30 pence a gram, you will never lose money. You can take it to the smelters tomorrow and get your money back. That's not really gambling. That's common sense. Safe business, whichever way you want to look at it. You've got a beautiful, beautiful christening magueur tank, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now there's no point in me searching these on eBay because the prices are going to be up there and down there. But I can tell you now, I'm a, I'm a pound a gram minimum on this. I want a hundred pound plus for this little uh, cup. Um, I've got all the details there. It's 1811. Um, I've got the make, uh, makers, everything. It's all there. But again, as I've said, nice full set of English hallmarks. Look at the gauge. Look how thick the cup is, the silver is. Really nice quality. Beautiful, beautiful little cup. 30 pound. Do you know what? I'll order a thousand of them, please. Thank you very much. Okay, I got three more pieces to show you, and they are three stunning, stunning lots. Let's start off with, well, I'm gonna say, I can't even say my favorite, because all three of them I absolutely adore. Start off with this first one. Now, it's a silver, solid silver Vesta case. It is fully hallmarked for Chester 1890. Now on the front, there's a coin for Paul Kruger. You know, man with the Kruger rand on the front. On the back, it's dated and it tells you it's from, who is from, who is to, on the 11th of August, 1897. Now, he gave me a bit of paper, which I've got around you somewhere. I've put, say, if I have, and i got to find it. <laughs> I know that makes sense. I put a safe in one of my books I have, and I'm not sure which one. Um, anyway, he gave me the history. He gave me the names of the soldier who was given this pillbox, uh, Vesta case, and the lady that gave it to him, his girlfriend. Fully hallmarked, fully inscribed on the reverse. You got a little strike a bit down here. And as I've said, on the front, you got a coin with Paul Kruger on. Now, the soldier that was given this didn't like Paul Kruger, or he was just bored one day, because what he'd done, he'd actually scraped or engraved a pipe onto the coin and a hat, and given him a hat and pipe. Sandra's back. Hello. I'll yeah. get back to this. Hi. Go on. Go on, say hello. Hi there. Look at me old dress for, for winter. Shopping, cost me loads of money. Why then? Guys, the stone you've just hidden <laughs> is the fear of the camera. Say hello. No. You're not going to say hello? She's shy. Oh, well. Right, I'll get back to this in a minute, guys. Did you see clipping earlier on? Yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hi, I haven't seen you all for a while. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm back on Slimming World. Don't go there. I'll let you know I'm going through the months. Not good so far. I got cake. <laughs> what are you buying, yeah? Nothing. 
See you in a minute. Why would I something in it? See you in a minute. Bye. Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyway, let's get back to this. This beautiful, beautiful object. As I was saying, um, given to a soldier, didn't like it, graffitied the front, all engraved on the back. Now, the soldier served in the Boer War. So, that makes this a really, really interesting piece of social history. As I've said, solid silver, and I absolutely love it. Now, I'm not going to do the eBay search on this because I've done so many different searches on Vesta cases. Now, you're probably fed up of seeing all the different prices of Vesta cases. There isn't going to be one from the Boer War. There ain't going to be one with the soldier on a graffiti and all the rest of it. You know as well as I do, Vesta cases start at £30 and go up to £1,000. I've priced this one at £125. So... I think that's a fair price. It inked on eBay yet, it's in my shop. Beautiful, beautiful piece. I absolutely adore it. And to be honest with you, what another beautiful piece of history to come through Bessemer Road, Cardiff. 30 pound that cost me. Obviously, I bought above scrap value here. There's about eight to 10 pound of scrap but there. I don't mind that. So I've probably paid a pound a gram for this and I rate that a good five pound a gram any day of the week for that. So that's that one. The next one I bought off him. Are you, are you ready for this? You're gonna love these. Two solid silver salts. Now originally they would have had a glass liner in them little blue glass or clear glass liner to protect the silver from the salt because they would have been on a table and you would have just took a pinch of salt out now they formed as viking longboats now this one is by Henrik Muller of Norway it is fully hallmarked it's 830 grade silver guys not um, 925 and it's got the town mark of Trondheim. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, okay. But, uh, and the whole mark is from 1958 to 1937. This gentleman, Muller, has stuff in museums. And that is a beautiful salt. Now I'll show you on eBay in just a minute. Prices range from 20, 30 pound up to 200 pound for one salt. That should be up there towards the top. It's got the top name, Moolah. Uh, Norway, silver, beautiful. Now, I did say I had two. That one's Norway. And this one has a hallmark for Denmark. Slight difference in the designs too. You can see the C on this one here along the bottom and that. And it's much heavier than this one. Again, 830 silver, but with a Denmark hallmark on that one. Um, these are not as much money. That's the star. This maker is, as I say, in museums. This one's good, but that one's great. Let's have a little look at what they're pulling on eBay. Okay, so here, all I have searched is a silver longboat salt. Highest price is five results. Okay, as you can see there, the deer assault is £460 asking price. Then you've got 125 then you've got £85 pound by there. And that's a 1980 Scandinavian Viking long boat. Mine is better than that. But then you come underneath, and you've got another one. They'd ask it, uh, it's actually on auction, £30. Pounds, so you don't know where that's going to finish. Same as the one underneath, they've only just been listed. So you don't know where they're going to finish. However, if we come across here, these are sold listings, and there's 11 of them. £225 there is the top price. £188 there for one. £106 for a pair, £62 for a pair, and £60. And £64 there. Now, this one here I thought was on par with... The Danish one that I got, but the other one has got a better maker and more weight. 
So as you can see, they're good money. Okay, uh, you're gonna have to excuse the background noise, guys. I've got, I've been trying to film for days and days and the council are doing work rebuilding a new library across from me, um, which will help me in generating foot flow th to the shop. But God, it's driving me nuts at the moment with jack armors and all the rest of it. So there's the two salts. As I said, um, Danish one, I've got 55 pound on in the shop at the moment. And the Norwegian one with the Muller maker's mark, I've actually got 85 on, which I think it might be a bit too cheap, to be honest with you. They cost me 10 pound each. Same buyer, again down the boot sale, 10 pound each. How can you buy that by a man who's exhibiting in museums for a tenner at a car boot sale, I don't know. So, really, really pleased. Some beautiful pieces. Um, and I got one final piece to show you in today's video and then I'll call it there. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, final piece of today's video. Um, this one come off a different seller now, but same day. Uh, what we got here is a bit of architectural antiques, Arch architectural salvage. Now, I don't know what you think of it. I personally think she is absolutely beautiful. Now, this is carved limestone. Um, looking at her and the way she's carved and the style, I think she's 18th century, not 19th century, but I could be wrong. I just love her. Now, she would have been part, I think, of a larger piece. <laughs> so, originally, I think she would have been part of a larger piece. However, she would mount on a wall as she is and look spectacular. She is gorgeous. I love her. A lot of work gone into carving this. This isn't a concrete piece. This is carved stone, carved limestone. Now, I pay £10 for her. And you have to admit, if you're into our architectural antiques, she's stunning. I love the look. I love the way. I love the aging. love it all. Now, if she was Victorian, I would have thought she'd have been slightly chubbier. Um... A more classical looking if you like but um, yeah I have no idea who made her obviously it could have been by a number of uh, stone merchants of the period but she is gorgeous I absolutely love her I paid a tenner now quite shockingly you can't research this on eBay uh, the only thing you can find on eBay are modern statues right nothing of this age and nothing of that quality um, now this is out of my comfort zone. I could be totally wrong. It could be a late Victorian piece, but I don't think so. Uh, you're welcome to leave a comment and let me know what you think. But from the carving, the quality carving, the quality of everything, from the way she's carved, the look she got, I think she's Georgian. 10 pounds she cost me. I've actually got 95 on her in my shop. But, even if she don't sell, I love her, and I wouldn't mind keeping her. But she also adds a bit of uniqueness to the shop. When you consider some of the pieces I've shown you in today's video, my shop is really starting to get a really nice, interesting feel. It's not just ceramics and glass. I'm really excited of some of the things I'm finding decorative art-wise. And that's the area I want to move into more, is decorative arts. So... Yeah, what can I say? Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> well, there's absolutely loads, loads more I bought over the last week or two. I tell you what, them builders are seriously getting on my nerves. There's loads more I have bought over the last week or two that they haven't filmed yet. Um, if you look just by there, you can see the most beautiful early to mid 19th century blue and white charger. Um, there's some really nice things that I haven't filmed yet. Nice gold watch, you got some stunning stuff. Had a Darm crystal duck. Um, so yeah, I've got some really nice pieces. I'll try and make another video now in a few days um, with some of the newer pieces. But yeah, everything's going really well. I'm buying some of the best stuff I've bought in ages. Um, 
Someone put on the group the other day on my Antiques Arena group. Just asking the question on how they're finding buying now versus a year ago. Now, to them, they are struggling. They're saying it's getting harder to find the stuff where they are. Um, it's getting more expensive and the quality's gone down. I'm the other way. Um, I said to them, I said, I'm finding the quality's gone up, the price has come down, and the availability is everywhere. It don't matter where I go, I'm seeing stuff that people are selling, and I'm thinking, wow, you should not be selling that. Some of that stuff could be in a museum. And the price is, I can make a good profit on. So I really, I can't moan. Uh, I buy cheap, you know I buy cheap, but that's the way I do it. Um, if they're not happy with the price I make, then they can try and sell it themselves. It's not always easy to match the buyer with the item. Um, sometimes it takes a very long time to match the two together, especially for the right money. So it is what it is. Anyway, I think you'll agree that was an amazing buy-in day. Some beautiful pieces. Some of the best pieces I've had for a while, to be honest with you, and I absolutely love them. And i got more and more to show you. But I'm going to leave it there. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. I am so sorry about the background noise. Excuse me. I'm going to sneeze. Stay tuned. Don't forget, um, I put a competition video up this month. So if you haven't seen that, go and enter that. Let's run until the end of February. So go and enter that competition. It's totally free, guys. It's for, only for my subscribers. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, if you want to come see me, the shop is Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.